Hello, I'm Pete Gerlach. I'm the author of the nonprofit educational website at sfhelp.org. That website is about breaking the silent toxic cycle that gets passed down the generations of psychological wounds and ignorance. It's eight self-help lessons that I've learned over 31 years as a professional family therapist. I've learned it from well over a thousand men and women, single parents, grandparents, and some of their kids. Lots of people, lots of teachers, and many other professional mental health people. I want to offer some suggestions here, very broad brush suggestions on a common parenting problem. Parenting is lesson six out of eight in my website. The problem that you may face if you're watching this is how to parent a quote difficult child effectively. Lots and lots of thoughts, videos, programs, books, websites devoted to this complex topic. I want to offer some comments that you probably have not heard before or if you have they've probably been muffled in this video, I want to narrow the topic. Uh, I'm purposely excluding any problems that are caused in children by organic issues, which need a doctor and a psychiatrist to assess. I'm neither of those. I'm not qualified to comment on that. And I'm going to minimize comments on teenagers, though what I have to say, most of that applies. Difficult teens have some special problems which deserve a different video. Um, so, here are some suggestions on difficult kids with those two exceptions. What is a difficult child? What do I mean by that? Um, I mean any child who notably has trouble at home or school or socially. What kind of trouble? Uh, they're notably rebellious, defiant, dishonest, angry, rude, sarcastic, disrespectful, selfish, or they're a bully, or they have crying jags, or they're exceptionally isolated. These are signs of a troubled child, alias a difficult child at home. There are more signs which take place at school. Poor grades, despite coaching and mentoring, special classes, they won't try, they cut school, uh, despite um, punishments, they disrupt classes, despite punishments, uh, they initiate fight or are involved in fights, they're often late or truant, they have few friends or the friends they have are also very troubled. These are all common signs of a, quote, troubled child. Frequently, people think the child is the problem. My strong bias as a professional family therapist is the child is not, underline, not the problem. There are two contributing factors that are causing these kinds of behaviors. One, the adults who are responsible for raising this child, this troubled child, have almost certainly inherited major psychological wounds from their ancestors. They are ruled by a false self without knowing it. If you don't know what this means, I'm not going to elaborate here. I have made a number of videos relative to lesson one in my website. It's about um, psychological wounds. There are six of them and they pass down the generations unless adults own them, admit them, and reduce them. That's one probable cause of any troubled children in your lives, in your life, or your home. The companion cause is adult ignorance. In my long experience as a family therapist and a researcher and a student for many years, I compassionately believe many, prob uh, many parents of, quote, troubled children 
have never learned from their ancestors or their schools or society. They've never learned about how personalities are formed. They've never learned how to communicate and problem solve effectively. They've never learned about healthy three-level grief and how to assess if grieving is not finished. They've never learned the fundamentals of healthy relationships and how to choose and maintain them. Parents of troubled kids have often never learned how to grow and maintain holistically healthy families or how to do effective parenting. They're handicapped, such adults, men and women. They may have college degrees. They still are ignorant of these topics. They're handicapped by lack of informed knowledge. You put the wounds and the ignorance together that often causes early childhood trauma, which then contributes to problem behaviors in a child at home or at school. If you accept this premise, what are some specific things that parents of a, quote, troubled child or a problem child, um, what are some things that parents can do? Um, the very first thing, define honestly, define your priorities. I'm speaking now to parents and their supporters. Define your priorities honestly. Rank your top five priorities in life. Um, not just over the coming week, over the next 25 years. What are your long-term priorities? How important is family health, holistic health, mental, emotional, spiritual health? If it does not rank, honestly, in your top five priorities, stop watching this video. Because what I have to say from now on depends on your having a high motivation to build a high nurturance family. Nurturance is filling everybody's needs. That's what families do if they are functional. So if you don't value trying to build and increase the, the um, functionality level of your family, uh, what I have to say will be of little value to you. So besides defining your priorities together, the second thing I urge you to do is to see the video. I'll give you the link here. See the video on the toxic cycle, the inheritance cycle where wounds and ignorance pass down the generations. That probably happened to you, and it probably is happening to your children against your best wishes. Get acquainted with this cycle and take responsibility for breaking it in your home and in your family. You won't hear this suggestion in most other advice about parenting troubled children, which is a tragedy in my biased opinion. The third suggestion I have is do not over-focus on the child. The, child, the child's behavior is, not, is a problem, yes. And it is a symptom of the core problem underneath the behavior. Parents, wounds, and ignorance. If you simply limit your focus to the child, you're going to miss the big picture and the root problems, and you probably will have little success. Okay, so don't over-focus on the child. And don't listen to mental health experts that suggest that you should. I believe they're wrong. Um, assess yourselves, each adult supervising a troubled child, each adult, including grandparents, foster parents, step parents. Assess yourself honestly for false self wounds. See the videos related to lesson one. They show you how to do this. There are 12 worksheets in my nonprofit website that give you a, a very powerful tools to find out, are you psychologically wounded? Because if you are, it's very likely you're passing on these wounds to your kids and that's causing their behavior. 
So assess yourself, and if you have wounds, own them, and take responsibility for helping each other, you adults, help each other reduce your wounds over time. This is not a simple project. Um, I urge all the adults in the one or two homes, in the case of divorce, divorced family, all adults, not just the local custodial adults, all adults, including grandparents, study lessons one through six in my website, patiently over time. Take a lesson a week, study them, discuss them. There are over a hundred related videos on YouTube that can help you learn what are in those lessons. They contain all the information you need to change your attitudes, to improve, improve your communication, to improve the relationship with your children, to learn how to problem solve with your children um, in a healthy win-win way. Education is absolutely key. If you over-focus on the child's behavior, on their lying or their rudeness or their sullenness, sullenness or their grades or they're using drugs or pr promiscuity. If you focus on those behaviors, you're going to miss the point. You need education. You don't know what you don't know. So I urge you, find out what you didn't learn as young adults from your own parents or from the school systems. Heal your wounds educate yourselves, help each other learn and apply what you learn. As part of that, I urge you, inventory um, what you all, every adult and every child has lost. What broken bonds have you each experienced since the child was born and because the child was born, including divorces, if any, and remarriages, if any. I'm not just talking about death. Especially, focus on lesson three, which is about healthy grief. If you want to motivate yourself, find a quiz on healthy grieving. Take that in my website and find out how much you don't know about healthy grieving and how much you're not teaching your child or modeling your child. So take an inventory of any incomplete grief and help each other adults and kids complete grieving your losses. Take a special look at how you're communicating with your child. There are several videos that focus explicitly on how to improve communication with typical preteen kids. Study those and apply them. In particular, focus on empathic listening, respectful win-win problem solving and assertive I messages. There are videos on each one of these. Study them, apply them, they work, they'll help you. If you put effort into this and it doesn't work, the last suggestion I have is hire a qualified family therapist. I have a video on what family therapy is. I've got an article on how do you pick a qualified therapist in my uh, website. Um, so there's lots of help available. But if you find that you can't do this alone, there's no shame in that. Don't hire a child psychologist. Hire a family therapist with a lot of experience, especially one who is open to the ideas that I've described in this brief summary video. I've covered an awful lot of information here. So I hope you'll pause and rethink and process this and maybe look at it again and maybe again. Show this and discuss it to the adults in your family. Have compassion for yourselves. You have a very difficult job. If you want your child to change, you must change. I hope you find this useful. Thanks for watching.